Let's get ready to worship God. Dear God, please help us to come down our hearts. Please help us to focus our attention, to worship you, to sing praises, to read your name on her. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Aunt Tiny, and I'm going to start to lead us in worship. All right, good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday. We're going to start our time of worship with the song that we always begin with. Can you read that on the screen for me? Turn your eyes upon Jesus. So for this song, as a reminder, every time we sing the chorus, Jesus, to you, lift our eyes, we're going to stand up together, okay? And every time we sing the verses, we sit back down. Okay. Let's get ready and invite our hearts to sing this to God. Turn your eyes. Thank you. 
the first verse again. Fantasy, your glory is shining, brighter than the moon and the stars. Finally, we honor and clear you above. Feeling sad or scared, 
we ask God to change our hearts. So this is a, a prayer. As we sing it, let's pray to God that he would change our hearts into whatever he wants it to be.
on the feet. Okay, let's close our eyes in prayer one more time. Put our hands together, bow our heads, and close our eyes. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, that we can come together to worship you. We thank you, Lord, for giving us these songs to turn our eyes to you. We pray that you would help calm our hearts and keep our minds attentive for the next lesson. We thank you, Lord, for giving us Jesus most of all. And we pray these things in your Son's precious name. Amen. 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 Right. Let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, we come before you. Thank you so much for this time that we can come together. Thank you for this freedom and privilege that we can come together to study your word and listen to your word freely without any oppression, without any pressure, without any persecution. We just ask that, Lord, you will help us to open our ears, open our eyes, most of all, open our hearts so that we can hear you, listen to your word, and what exactly you want us to learn today from this topic. So thank you, Lord. Please be with us, be with the students here. Help them to um, just be there at their best uh, so they can please you, that we can be your delight during the next couple or well, 10 minutes or so. I pray all the things in Jesus' name. So Ten Commandments is found in the Old Testament or New Testament? Old Testament, all right. But let me tell you, let me get this work. Oh, there you go. All right. You see a fence in front of this house? Do you have a fence in your house? I mean, outside your house? Yes. What does a fence, what does a fence do? What does the fence do? Okay, Hannah, what does the fence do? You protect the house and the people that live in the house, right? Very good. So the fence protects, provides protection. Boys and girls, God's law is the same way. Okay, let me ask you. When your parents set up a fence outside your house, why do they want to do that? They want to protect you, right? It's because they want, they want, they love you. They want to make sure that you are well protected. So they set up the fence so that you can be well protected because they love you. They, they don't want you to get hurt. And people who set up, set the fence up because they want to protect the people out of love. All right? Now, God's word is the same way. God's law is the same way. God has laws for us because he wants us to live safely and prosperously in this whole life. So he has rules for us, okay? So what is the law? A law is any written rule established by the authority to keep the people safe. Can you tell me who is authority over you? Government, thank you. Definitely, your parents love you. They're definitely the authority over you, right? Police officer, yes, definitely, right? Fireman, okay, yes, definitely the fire. Teachers, thank you. How about God? Yes, God, Jesus. Uh, your teachers, your parents, the government, firemen, people that protect us, they have authority over us, right? Okay, so remember, authority keep people safe. Now, okay, God's law, which is called Ten Commandments, bear the same purpose. That is to keep you safe and keep you prosperous, keep you well lived in this life so that you can be safe and that you can follow the rules, like what God says. We talked about earlier, the Ten Commandments is God's rule, God's law. And remember, boys and girls, I talk about the fence, right? The people who set up the fence because they want you to be well protected. And God set up his law, his rule, the Ten Commandments, because he wants you to be well protected. He wants to love you, show his love to you, to us, by giving us the law. Now, there are two things I didn't share with you. I share with the younger class. Jesus gave us two greatest commandments in the New Testament. Uh, let's not look at this first. Let's go back. I'm sorry. I don't confuse you. The New Testament in Matthew 22, uh, uh, verse 37 to 39, there are two greatest commandments. Can you guys tell me? It's from Jesus. Can you guys kind of think about it? What's Matthew 22, 37? Two greatest commandments from Jesus. The first one is, Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Matthew 22, verse 37. So Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength. What does that mean? That means that God wants you to love him with how you feel, your heart, with all your knowledge, what you know, and with 
your soul, your spirit. So boys and girls, you, we are different from animals. When God first created us, he created us with spirit, with soul. So you have ability. Remember, we talk about God's crea creator. He created us to have the ability to love him, to desire a perfect relationship with him, to think, and to what? To love one another. Okay, so we are different. We are created by God. Okay, also with your strength, with your power, with the strength that God's given you. Love him with all your strength. Second greatest commandment is what? Love your neighbor as yourself. Boys and girls, you know this. But how does that click? Does that, how does that make connection? Okay, what does that mean? Love others as yourself. Who is your neighbor? Yeah, anybody around you? Good. Actually, in this sense, the neighbor means what? The neighbor means what? The people who have needs. Okay, not just those who live around you. We're going to expand the meaning, definition. The neighbor is people that, who have needs around you. But God, Jesus said, love people who have needs as yourself. Can you think of an example? What does that mean by love your neighbor as yourself? By not focusing on yourself, right? You're focusing on other, pe focusing on other people's needs. Imagine, okay, boys and girls, let's put yourself in other people's shoes. If you have needs, what would you expect other people to do? Very easy, right? If I have needs, I would love to have people to help me, right? That's how you want other people to show love to you. That's what God's word says. Jesus said, if you see other people who have needs, you will go help. And you help because you love them and you put yourself in their shoe. If I have trouble, I have needs, I want other people to come and help me as well. So that's, me, that, that, that's what Jesus means. Love your neighbors as yourself. Love others as yourself. Love those who have needs as yourself. All right, boys and girls, Hannah's right. You first have to take away the focus on yourself. Oh, I only I want to go through my day. I, I need to go to this place. I need to do this one. I need to get that thing done. But when you see somebody who has needs, you say, okay, it's okay. I'm going to drop what I need to do. I'm going to help him first. So help her first. It takes sacrifice. It takes sacrifice. But that's what Jesus wants us to do. Jesus did the same thing for us, boys and girls. He did, he did that for us so that he died on the cross for us so we can have eternal life. Right? His life got interrupted. He gave up his kingship. He came down to die for us so that we can have life. Okay? All right. Next one. So, with that being said, all right? Okay. All right. So those are two greatest, greatest commandments from Jesus. But in the Old Testament, we can find 10, commend, ten commandments that which is, was given to the people of Israel, God's chosen people, through Moses. God gave these Ten Commandments to Moses, and Moses brought it down to the people from the mountain. And those two greatest commandments, I want you guys to remember, the Ten Commandments are listed in the Old Testament, are given by God. They are simply summarized in those two greatest commandments I just talked to you about, okay, from Jesus. All right? They're the same thing, but the two greatest commandments, just a summary of these Ten Commandments. All right? All right. You guys read with me the first one, the shade of the words. Ready? Go. You shall have no other gods before me. That's the first one. That's what Tobias told us earlier, right? Love the Lord your God. Above all, you don't worship other gods. Next one, ready, go. You shall not make for yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything. Basically, God tells us no idol. You don't worship idols. Well, boys and girls, idols are not just a statue or some kind of image that you carved out. Idols could be something that you love more than God. Auntie Alice once had an idol in my life. My idol was my children. I would do anything for them. I would do everything, anything, literally anything. I wasn't working. I would, if they forgot to bring the folder to school, I would drop whatever I was doing, drive, my, drive their folder to the school for them. They were my idols. But then God showed me, if you love your children more than you love me, then something's wrong. So I now learn to submit everything there, including them, to God. Because God loves them more than I do. And God knows their needs. So boys and girls, if you find yourself enjoying many things other than God, you got to give you a give self a check. Okay? The younger kids tell me, oh, yeah, Minecraft, Pokemon cards. <laughs> That's their idols. I agree. If you come here, you just want to talk to your friends, but not worshiping God, your friend becomes your idol. You got to remember that, okay? Make the right decision. Who is your priority? 
God should be your first priority in every aspect of your life. Okay? All right. Next one. Ready? Go. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. We do not use God's word in the wrong purpose. Okay? We don't curse in God's name. We, we shouldn't curse at all, basically. Right? We should use God's name with honor. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. That's what you do here, boys and girls. Sabbath day is a day that God designated for his people to worship him. So you come to church on Sunday with your family, you worship God. In your heart, you're not distracted by anything else. But you want to keep Sabbath day holy. You will rest in God's presence and worship him only. Ready? Honor your father and your mother. What does that mean? Obey them. One way that you can honor your father and mother is to obey them. Listen to what they say. Not only listen, but do what they say too, right? Okay. Next one, you shall not murder. You shall not kill. Not ants or cockroaches. We're talking about living person. We are free to choose sin, but we are not free to choose consequence. Remember that. Sin is anything that we do. We say we think that this does not please God. But, you, but we, are free to, we are free to choose to sin. But we are not free to choose a consequence. There's a consequence to every decision we make, including sin. Remember that, boys and girls. Okay? So if you murder someone, you have to pay for it. Prison, maybe, you'll, maybe your life will be taken away too. Okay? You shall not commit adultery. Okay? Yeah. Adultery is basically a married, a married woman. For example, I married Uncle Ray. But if I, in our marriage, I had another relationship with another man outside my marriage. And that's considered adultery. I commit adultery. You should not steal. Very simple, right? You don't take things that don't belong to you. Okay, 16. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. Okay? Do not lie, basically. Do not lie. All right? Tell the truth. It means that you have to sacrifice your benefits, your reputation. You have to tell the truth. Do not make up a story. Do not lie. Do not omit. Do not leave out anything that has happened. Any sort of that nature. Okay? Last one, you shall not covet your neighbor's house. Basically, covet means what? Jealous? I like it. I want to take it. Remember King David in the Old Testament? Stealing, but covet start even before stealing, before the action. Covet is what? Jealous. I look at that thing so beautiful. I want to take it before I actually take it. Remember King David in the Old Testament? What to King David? What did he do? He saw this woman, beautiful woman, bathing, and he loved her. He asked people to go find her. And found out that she's like her husband fighting in the front line, right? The battle for King David. What did he do? He actually killed the husband. He committed murder. He committed adultery. Had a relationship with a married woman. And he covet. But first of all, he covet because he saw her. Beautiful woman, right? So he's in his heart. He already started getting jealous. I want to take this. I want to have this. Okay? So before action actually happens. All right. Okay. But boys and girls. I'm going to skip all that. The question is, do you think that these Ten Commandments are still relevant in today's world? Yes. Yes. We just talked about it, right? All the applications. I know your parents are waiting outside. We're going to get through this really quickly. But my question to you is, knowing that these rules are relevant today, and remember, God gave us this rule because he loves us. We can, in every single of these rules, we can see his character in it. Question for you. Do you think that God thinks that we can actually keep all the Ten Commandments? We, why, why can we not do it perfectly? We're not perfect, okay? But God doesn't say, oh, you, you cannot keep my, my, my word, my law perfectly, so I'm, not, I'm just going to get rid of you. But instead, God said, well, I send you a helper. I send you someone that can help you. Who is that someone can help us? Jesus, right? Even the Holy Spirit, boys and girls, one of the jobs the Holy Spirit has is to convict our hearts. So you need to listen. So you need to ask Jesus for help. When you feel like I cannot keep all the commandments, I don't want to make God sad because I have to break the rule, but I'm going to ask Jesus and the Holy Spirit to help me. Okay, remember, boys and girls, God is gracious. In all this rule he gives us because he wants to protect us so we can live safely and prosperously. But you have to remember to ask God for help. Any questions? No, no questions. Very good. All right, let's pray. Dear Jesus, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for, for this time. I pray for these boys and girls here, Lord, as they learn about your heart, how you want to have this law so that you want to protect them, keep them safe, 
and help them to live a joyful life, the life that is pleasing to you. I pray that they will remember, they will trust you when they fail to keep your word, keep your laws, Lord. They will seek help. They will ask Jesus, the Holy Spirit, to help, help them. So thank you, Lord, for loving us. And pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.